Well, uh, are you all ready for some good news, some <laughs> things that have happened? In, Absolutely. In, the feed has been, my Facebook feed has been full of all sorts of fun things. Um, so, um, Mark, or, or is it uh, uh, Phil out there, whoever's going to drop the first image, I'm going to talk about the Judge Dana L. Christensen. Talk, that's, talking let's drop about that images image. dropping. I didn't mean that, but there you go. Oh, boy, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. All righty then. Image <laughs> dropped. Okay. Uh, so uh, the district court for the, Mon uh, for the District of Montana ruled uh, that the First Amendment does not protect Andrew Anglin, a publisher of the neo-Nazi website Daily Stormer, from liability for his decision to launch an anti-Semitic troll storm mm -hmm. directed at Tanya Gersh, a Jewish real estate agent in Whitefish, Montana. So, yay, civil rights working, doing the right thing. Um, that's a good thing. All righty. And uh, that wasn't actually that. Okay. Um, another thing was uh, three Kansas Republicans switch parties in one week. Um, I was I lived in Kansas for... 10 years or so, and it's pretty hairy there. Uh, so Stephanie Clayton, Dinah Sykes, and Barbara Bollier. Uh, that's Stephanie Clayton. Uh, Dinah Sykes is the next photo. And then Barbara Bollier, this is what she said, and I just um, love this. State Senator Barbara Bollier was the first to defect last week, citing her disgust with President Donald Trump. She told Salon's Matthew Rosa by email last week that when Kansas Republicans codified a statement against transgender identity in their platform, coupled with the blind support of President Trump's intolerant and dictatorial style, my moral compass said no. Wow. Love it. So now these are representatives? Uh, Kansas, three Kansas Republicans, uh, yeah, state senator. Okay. They're state senators. Wow. Yeah. Um, so three, and supposedly there are going to be more who defect uh, from the Republican Party to go, to move over to the Democratic Party. And I, I double-checked this because it's, you know, a salon. And there are videos of her being the staunch Republican. And then if you go to her website right now, she's Democrat. It's pretty awesome. She said no more of this stuff. Trump did not remotely represent her value system and that the state party's anti-transgender proclamation, which reads, we believe God created two genders, male and female, was the final straw. I support the people of Kansas. I do not condemn whoever they are. And I thought, yes, someone. Just has. imagine if, if Kansas had a rule saying you can't change your party registration if you're doing it because you oppose one particular uh, public officials' uh, perspective. Uh huh. Same thing. <laughs> well, I think what's interesting about that, though, is that that's almost a Bible quote, right? Yeah. Male and female created he them. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's literally you're, they're not supposed to be promoting specific religion. Mm -hmm. And I can find the passage in the Bible mm -hmm. that where that quote comes from. Yeah. So there's that, and then as a scientist coming from the other side of this, it's not true. There oh, are yeah, not. yeah, no, I get. Yeah, it. it's just. <laughs> I get it. I'm I mean, just saying it's like so weird that yeah. they would put in language that is pretty much lifted out of the Bible. Lifted out of the Bible. I'm not saying that there are no other religious texts that would right, right. have similar language. Right. But certainly, um, so separation of church and state problem there. And then if you're a scientist, there's intersex, and then there's gender. There's all sorts of ways that's bad and wrong, and that's science, not opinion. Good Lord. Okay, so right on. Reason has won there. That's nice to know. Okay, and then a new Democratic lawmaker hangs the trans flag outside her office on Capitol Hill. Oh, Mark or <laughs> Phil or whoever said, yes, look at this. It's delicious. I love it. It's hanging there. Jennifer Wexton, a D Democratic for Virginia representative, placed a transgender flag outside of her office on Capitol Hill on the day of her swearing-in ceremony on Thursday. Thank you to everyone who knocked on the door and made a phone call on this campaign. This flag is there because of you, and for you, my heart is full. <laughs> and I believe, uh, so she's actually kind of in my backyard. I, I live in right Arlington, on. and I think she represents Fairfax um, and some other areas, and also uh, it represents... 
uh, the district, uh, the, uh, forgive me, the Virginia State District um, represented at the State House by Danica Rome, uh, who you guys might be familiar with. She was the, um, a, a transgender woman who was elected to the State House last year. Okay. Um, and uh, um, I, I think it in part may have been a, a bit of solidarity with, uh, with Danica, but uh, who can say? Right on. It's kind of interesting. It made me chuckle that... Um... You know, I'm so excited, as are a lot of people, to see so much diversity sweeping in, like, mm-hmm. after the midterms, like, seeing so many uh, minorities, people of color, women, um, moving in. And there was someone on my – on a feed – I don't know if it was on my feed or on a feed on social media that was just like, you know, well, why does it matter? Oh, God. And uh, – it reminded me of something that I heard recently. There was an interview with Nancy Pelosi and, you know, regardless of your feelings on Pelosi, just, you know, the content of what she was saying, someone had asked her, her they were asking her about her history in politics and how she got involved in it. And she described how she had all these aspirations and then she ended up getting married and then she ended up having a kid and then she ended up having another kid. And, you know, she started having kids and then it was sort of like that became my thing. Like I was mom and, you know, wife and that was it. And then after her oldest daughter got to graduation age, she decided, for whatever reason, I'm going to run for office. And she had, like, you know, political history in her family, so this wasn't like her family was completely divorced from this. But what was interesting to me was she said that male politicians asked her, why do you want to run for office? Why do you want to be in public service? Mm -hmm. Right? And um, goodness. I, I find, and and when she, when, oh, she said one of them said to her something to the effect, she's like, the attitude was kind of, well, do women have issues or problems that they need addressed? Because mm-hmm. if they do, they could just, you know, let us know what they are and we'll, we'll address them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, so you can just sit down and you stay out of politics and you just let the men take care of it. And you don't need to be sitting in a seat mm-hmm. with us and working with us. And you don't need to be, get your little pretty head involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I posted a, a little cartoon with this particular post, and it had a picture of two male stick figures at a chalkboard, do, one of them writing a mathematical equation. And the other one says, boy, you suck at math. <laughs> and then there's another square next to it where it's the same picture, except the one writing the equation has a little skirt on, so she's a little you know, female stick figure. Mm-hmm. And the other figure is saying, boy, girls suck at math. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, kind of sums it up, right? So it, it's sort of like you have this, you're treated like this big demographic, you know, that why in the world would you want to do this? And it's like, I don't know, maybe for the same reason you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Maybe because I, you know, it, you, you wouldn't, it, this isn't the kind of question that you would get asked if it was like a male colleague who was an up-and-coming mm-hmm. politician. He wouldn't mm-hmm. say, well, what, what are, why do you want to run for office? Like, mm-hmm. do you have some issues you could just tell your standing representatives? And, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. hell, if that's how it worked, we would never have to have elections, right? You could just contact the person who's your yeah. representative and yeah. tell them you have an issue. And, uh-huh. I mean, the reason people run is because, you know, it repre- yeah. it's about representation, yeah. right? And yeah. while I do get the idea that, you know, someone can be more representative. There, there are certainly um, women who would not be representative of me, right. and I get that. Yeah. But to say that um, people who share my experience in society are generally going to be less likely to represent, I don't mm-hmm. believe that for a second. And there's a lot of times that I have, you know, spoken to very sympathetic, very um, enlightened uh, men that can't, understand something and it takes me a great deal of effort to explain it to them about, you know, the, the reality of, of what it is to live in this society as a woman. And I watch sometimes the light bulb go on, right? Where it'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, I get what you're saying mm-hmm. now. And mm-hmm. I understand what you mean mm-hmm. by that. And, it, and it's like, yeah. And most of the women that I hang out with, mm-hmm. if I were to say this, I wouldn't have to explain it for three days. Right. Or, you know? <laughs> oh, three days. You're lucky. I mean, my, my husband, I adore him, been married well, I've been with him for about 20 years, and it and it's only in the last several years. It's taken me years of sharing with him my experience as I've gone right. through life, how different it is for yeah. me than it is for him. I it goes. It's everything from 
uh, just walking down the street to getting a job, everything is different. Um, and I think most men are kind of dismissive at first because it's not their world, but then over and over again, all the little things that are pecked to death by ducks, yeah. I love that, um, that make my experience, and damned if that doesn't matter, uh, to have women, minorities, all of the differences represented in government. Um, and with that, if uh, Phil or Mark, I don't know who's going to do this, but I have images that were posted on Facebook that just made me delighted, showing the diversity of the incoming Congress. Is, that, is there, do you have those figures? Can we drop those? We Look at that, as emojis. Oh, I love that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. And, and speaking of like all this diversity, I just want to make mm -hmm. the point that while I am on the receiving end when it comes to people not understanding the experience of, mm -hmm. of general, the broad general experience of women in society, mm -hmm. I don't want to say, you know, we're not homogenous either, but there is mm -hmm. still, a, you know, a, a social context in which people mm -hmm. have to navigate. Yes. And on at the same time, there are times when I'm outside too of someone mm -hmm. else's oh, yeah. reality, right? Absolutely. And so I'll have to look at that. And there, I have, you know, I'm so grateful to my friends, um, who are on social media who are trans, my friends who are black, because there are plenty of times, even the disabled community as well, mm -hmm. right? And so I'll go into those uh, feeds and there will be something that somebody's saying and I I'm, I don't even understand what they're saying. Like mm -hmm. they'll be complaining about a thing and I'll be like, well, why is that a problem? Mm -hmm. And I don't even, I don't even have to ask. I can just go on the thread and read the complaints of mm -hmm. all the people within that community saying, oh, I can't stand when someone does that to me. And they will definitely explain it. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to post to say, I don't understand why this is a problem. Mm -hmm. You just have to listen to what they're already mm -hmm. saying because they're all going to jump on that and say, here's why this is a problem for me. All right. um, and it, all it takes is, is listening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even, you know, and, and uh, I have learned so much about the experience of other people that I would never have clued into if they hadn't expressed it, Yeah. Uh, especially in those three yeah. communities specifically. It's right. just huge yeah. for me. I've learned so much yeah. from, from just going in and seeing what it is about their experience that is different than mine right. and why and, and what it is to live in their world. Not that I know how to, what right. it is to live in their world, but that... I can understand why they would be averse to something that to me seems really harmless. Mm -hmm. And then I start reading how it impacts them. And it's mm -hmm. like, whoa, okay, yeah. yeah, that's not harmless. Yeah, that's why Callie Wright's podcast has been so meaningful for me. It has opened that window. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I took a course. I went to uh, KU and in the same city, Lawrence, Kansas, there's Haskell Indian College. And I took a course there and it opened my eyes the probably well from everything I've read, one of the most underrepresented um, and maltreated groups are Native Americans, and almost nobody knows about what uh, sorts of things the various tribes endure. Um, so with that, there are now two women, <laughs> <laughs> Native American Congresswomen. Yeah. I am so thrilled about this. Uh, they are, let me, um, uh, Deb Holland, I hope I pronounced that correctly, of the Pueblo uh, of Laguna tribe and Sharice Davids of the Ho-Chunk Nation. This is a big deal. Yeah. Um, here in Austin, if you are in Austin, uh, on the first Saturday of every November, there is a powwow here. If you haven't gone, do. It is amazing. Um, before you go, if you do, learn the etiquette. Uh, there's a lot to know. It's not a costume. It's an outfit or their dress. It, uh, to, to say it's a costume, just think about that. It's not a costume. Right. It's their traditional garb. Um, so, and don't, don't just walk up and take your picture. They're, they're not things. They're people. Ask first, that sort of thing. Um, anyhow... So good to see that diversity there and Native American women. Holy crap, that is big. That is yeah. big. And congratulations to them. Um, yeah, I really think that this is going to be a year of shock for the House, <laughs> if not the Senate. I, I think that they're going to be shocked at yeah. how often they, they get the... Uh, just a moment. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, and called out on on the bigotry that they are so 
so normalized to that they don't even mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. And when they start getting schooled and stopped and questioned on every turn about, wait a minute, why are you assuming this? Because, you know, I'm trans or I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm a woman or I'm a minority or, you know, I'm a person of color and... Uh, what you're doing there, do you understand the implications mm-hmm. for the group that I represent? Mm-hmm. Because you you can be sympathetic to it, but you really, living it is a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. The House actually, um, I think for the first time, well, for the last 180 years, I think the House rules have prohibited the wearing of um, <laughs> Yeah, like headgear, head- hats or whatever, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, they they just changed those rules. Uh, yeah, they had to. Yeah. For the, for the head to scarf. allow for religious minorities to mm-hmm. be able to, mm-hmm. yeah, to it's like imagine. wear and what... I, uh, and it was pretty recent till that women weren't allowed to wear pants, right? That they had to wear skirts. Holy and, crap. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It, it, and it just reflects the idea of, of the, the nor, like what is normalized in the society versus what is, you know, not normal. Right. Um, and, and that means that um, the... Uh, the house is essentially just a few years ahead of the Mormon church, because I believe the Mormon (laughs) church just said that their um, female missionaries uh, don't have to wear, wear a skirt. They can wear pants. Oh boy. So that's 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 how far behind the rules have been. Yeah. On the other hand, this segues nicely into the documents that you can use to sign in on or swear in on. Uh, Mm. Can you drop that? Uh, image. There's, it's got Bible, Quran. There we go. All of them. And the U.S. Constitution for whom? <laughs> Atheists. Yes. And there are some atheists being sworn in on that. Yeah. And speaking of swearing in, how about the swearing in of the first openly bisexual woman? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Kirsten, or I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> Kirsten Cinema. Uh, she was sworn I in. I, I, you know, the, I, wish, I wish they had the picture with the stole because here's the, the thing. The stole yeah. is awesome. I know yes. we're not supposed to make comments about the mm-hmm. women and how they look, but holy cow, the, the con- the, that chamber has never seen so much style. Right. Like that was the best. I saw yes. that outfit and I, I was yeah. just like, it sh- would, would that I ever look that good. I mean, <laughs> really. And yeah. it, not that it, you know, not that it matters. I know it's not, you know, mm-hmm. tied to her, her capacity. Mm-hmm. It was just yes. that I, I, I am not used to seeing a legislator look so damn good. And powerful. Yes. Powerfully like, good. Wow. She she comes across like, do not mess with me. I just love the way she comes across. And she's being sworn in uh, with using the Constitution, yes. by whom? <laughs> Mike Pence. I love that. That is really funny. Oh, my <laughs> God. He's such a bigot. And I really, really hope that his wife was present to keep him from thinking sinful things, you know, because <laughs> that's how they roll. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I, I, sh- I, I should mention she wasn't sworn in on – she wasn't sworn in on the Constitution. She oh. was sworn in on a uh, an Arizona case reporter, I think. Even um, better. Yeah. Even better. And- Something – yeah. And not at all intimidated by Pence. She was having fun Clearly. with it. Clearly. like there are tape marks for where their spouse is supposed to stand. And she's like, uh-huh. oh, can we get a spouse? Can we? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just joking around. It, it was such a good inter- interaction on her part. Yeah, People, I, I th- they're just going to get so much pushback from all kinds of things like women's reproductive rights. Mm-hmm. This is going to be such battles. They're going to be epic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I really hope this trend continues. Yeah. And I, yeah. people were posting pictures of like just the colors, right? Like mm-hmm. you can see the, the, like when you showed that little graphic, I was thinking that was kind of what it was going to be, but it was more of these little emojis. But when, but people were sharing photographs of the actual oh, chambers. We have like that too. Dark blue and gray, yes, and black contrasting, and then you boom, can, color. Yeah, yeah, show how it used to be first, if you can show that photo first of all of the dark blue suits <laughs> of the, being sworn in. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look, there's a couple colors, and who's I think wearing them? The, the women, <laughs> right. I think that's a child in the bright, bright red. Okay, and now contrast that with the incoming house. Woo! Look at all that pretty colors. We got turquoise in there, and I think I'm half blind, but there's red and bright yeah. blue and all sorts of awesomeness. And lots of different colors of people. Yes. And 
all sorts of gender. Yeah. Ugh, just so good, so delicious. Looking at that, it was all over in my feed. And the and young it, people, right? Whoa. Young, young, young. Just yeah. such an infusion. And that's going to be another shock, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that oh, is yeah. going to be yeah. a, a cold glass of water in mm-hmm. the face. Women who are not ashamed to dance. Or to have sex or to, you right. know, woo, hey, yeah. what do you know? Right? Oh, my gosh. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, totally. I completely agree. And let's see. Then we can jump to something that's a little bit different. Uh, the photograph of the new astronaut class that's coming in. There are five women. Five badass women. And let me just tell you a little bit about each one going from left to right. Kayla Barron is an engineer and Navy officer. She already knows something about what it's like to live in tight spaces where a vessel wall is the only thing protecting you from a dangerous environment. The 29-year-old Navy lieutenant from Richland, Washington, was one of the first class of 11 women to join the submarine service after the men-only restriction was dropped. Wow. So she was probably serving on a nu- Navy nuclear submarine. Yeah. And, uh, Pretty amazing. Probably, yeah, right? And her reaction when she was free and free finally heard the news was appropriate. Quote, I was just over the moon, unquote. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Okay, the next woman over, Zena Cardman, is a marine scientist and microbiologist. I'm especially interested in life that lives in oddball environments on Earth, the extremophiles, Mm -hmm. says the 29-year-old from Williamsburg, Virginia. For me, it's a good analogy for environments that might be habitable on other planets. Cardamon is a multi-talented scientist whose bachelor's degree in biology included minors in chemistry, marine science, and creative writing. So she's, you know, many talents. And she hopes that her flexibility will make her the scientific Swiss army knife in the field. Yeah, she's the renaissance person. Right? Okay, and then there's Jasmine, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Mobelli. Uh, helicopter pilot, that goes out to you, Jen, and aerospace engineer. She earned both bachelor's and master's degrees in aerospace engineering and joined the Marines, becoming a helicopter pilot and rising to the rank of major. The next one over is Laurel O'Hara, research engineer and wilderness first responder. Growing up in Houston, her second grade class grew tomato seeds that flew in one of the space shuttles. So she's already (laughs) had her hands in in space stuff. And in high school, I used to watch the space shuttle debriefings when they used to do those in the space center. However, she tells students who dream of space not to be discouraged if they struggle with some subjects. My worst subject was actually math. She says, I struggled with math the whole way through. Those struggles, however, didn't stop her from getting a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering or a master's degree in aeronautics and uh, astronautics. O'Hara is also a private pilot, again, another renaissance woman, and an avid outdoors woman and has been serving as a wild nut what wilderness first responder using her certified EMT skills to help people in trouble in remote places. Awesome. Like you do in your free time. <laughs> All right. And then Jessica Watkins, geologist and curiosity collaborator. I have no idea what curiosity collaborate. Oh, I guess the curiosity of the, the machine, sorry. Is a mechanical engineer with a doctorate in geology, which led to a postdoctoral fellow in the Division of Geological and Planetary Scientists sciences at the California Institute of Technology, where she started working with NASA's scientific division as part of the team working with the Mars Curiosity rover. An avid athlete and a former National Rugby Sevens team member, she's also been acting as a volunteer assistant coach for the women's basketball team at Caltech. Oh my gosh. Watkins is an advocate for women, especially women of color in STEM, and she hopes that she can provide an encouraging example to a generation of mighty girls. Let's hear a roar. Rawr. That's just just freaking awesome stuff. Really good stuff. Um, I have a 13-year-old girl, and, and this is the sort of stuff that just I put her face in front of and say. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times people don't understand that um, opportunities you're not aware of are not opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right. So well said. things like this, you know, somebody might think, well, you know, what difference does it make? But it makes a lot of difference to people who are given restricted and narrow confines to what they're being told they can do. Mm-hmm. You don't just think about doing something until somebody puts puts it in your face mm-hmm. and says, you know, hey, this is an option for you. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and I think that's the thing. It's, you know, w- women in our generation, we, we were definitely given a little more freedom and mm-hmm. a little more options, but, I, but nothing like what I'm seeing now. No. A- and I'm so excited for what I'm seeing now. Yeah. I mean, this, this woman, uh, she just it just changed within her career that she could become uh, uh, a scientist on a submarine. Yeah, exactly. Within, as just within our our, peri- our our life, early late life, excuse me. Um, so there's all that good stuff, and now um, I have another thing I'd like to talk about, but we're way over time. I think we've had enough good stuff. I will... <laughs> too I will, much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing. Um, uh, last time I did a little special thing on someone from history that everybody should know about, but nobody does. And I have another person I was going to do this time, but you're going to have to wait till next month probably because we're over time. Uh, thank you so much, Tracy. Sure. It was, it was wonderful as always. And Jeff, thank you so much for being a part of this. You have enlightened me yeah. and reinforced that, that that I'm not just seeing things. And short notice too. Thanks yeah, for squeezing us in. Yeah, the, we you know, really appreciate it, especially since you could set up the video and everything. That was fantastic. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I, uh, I I can't think of much I'd rather do in <laughs> on uh, you know on on a dreary Saturday. So <laughs> right this was on. a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. good. We're glad I'm, you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I hope you can come back to talk yeah, about too. other stuff sure. that has to do with civil rights. We'd love it. And Anytime. on the other side of that wall, Phil, Mark, uh, Eric, and Brent are doing stuff to make this happen. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be doing this. We just show up and talk. That's right. Right? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And let me remind you, this is from, thank you, Tracy, from a couple of years ago. But in two weeks, on the 19th, we will be filming from the Women's March. Uh, please join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. There it is. Woohoo! For 2019, January 19th, here in Austin. And uh, wherever you are, I hope that you can find a Women's March and participate also. Um, so, I am, yeah. Just real quick American Atheists is having our annual convention um, the weekend oh. of April 19th in Cincinnati, Ohio. April and, 19th. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Um, I cannot wait. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, absolutely. This is Feel my free. favorite time of year. So Right on. I didn't, we didn't even ask if you had right. anything you needed to plug, but if you should always. I just, I had to make sure I got it in, right? Yeah, right? absolutely. Thank anything you. else you want to share? Oh, we promise uh, we'll cut you I, I think if you want to, uh, if you encounter any church-state separation issues uh, <laughs> where you live, please go to atheists.org slash violation. Um, right. And... Uh, that's a t h e i s t s dot org, um, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, I'll see what I can do to help you out. Yeah. Right on. I can has justice. Yes, oh, I can yeah. has justice. <laughs> nice, nice. All righty. So I'm going to leave you with this one final thought. We don't need a savior. We have each other. It's all we've ever had, and it's all we'll ever need. Bye. <laughs>